I s remember the transformations, or at least what the graph looks like. So if you guys remember, this is an absolute value function. And when we first started teaching the absolute value function, we used a table. And if you guys remember, this is what we called basically the V graph. Because if you were to plug in numbers for 1, 1 absolute value of 1 is 1. Absolute value of 2 is 2. And that was the same for the negative numbers. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. So the graph looked like a V, hence called the V graph. But then what we learned was there's ways that we can transform the graph. x minus h plus k. So if you're given a transformation, the best thing that I would do is, apps, is determine what your a, h, and k are. So my a in this case is 2. My h in this case is negative 1. And my k in this case is negative 4. Now, usually people have a, a problem with why is it looks like h is 1. Why is it negative 1? So since nobody looks like they're asking the question, I guarantee probably some people are asking that. So again, I'll go back through my instruction. Remember, the formula is x minus h, right? You always need to be subtracting the h or make it look like that. So we would write that as this, x minus h. So what is h? Negative 1, OK? Now, since we've identified them, what do all of them represent? So they all represent here, A, remember, stretches or compresses your graph. Um, and also, if it's negative, it reflects it. Then H, in this case, is going to be shifting your graph left to right, and K shifts your graph up or down. So in this case, you can kind of think of this, instead of going over 1, up 1, it's now being multiplied by 2, right? So you can think of that as over 1, up 2. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I'm getting way ahead of myself. First thing we should do, though, is find out where it's transforming. So if you guys remember, when we're looking at this, we have the vertex, which is at 0, 0. I call that kind of like our focus point. That's what we're going to want to shift. So if h is negative 1, we're going to go left 1. If k is negative 4, we're going to go down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So instead of going up 1 over 1, up 2 over 2, like we did here, it's being multiplied by 2. So we're going to go over 1, up 2. Over 2, instead of going up 2, we're going to go up 4, because you're multiplying it by four, 2. So it would be 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we could do the same thing over here. Over 1, up 2. Over 2, up 4. Now, my graph is not really that good of a graph, but this graph is actually supposed to look skinnier. So I probably should have done my scaling a little bit better, but this graph should look like it's skinnier. It's skinnier than the other version. Okay, My scaling is just not really that good. But the two stretched it vertically. So it should be skinnier than your other graph. 